Hey everybody, my name is Emilio from Digital Byte Computing. Today we're going to talk through the steps on how to transfer your data off your Netgear Ready NAS onto another NAS. Whether that be another Netgear Ready NAS or even a different brand such as a Synology or a QNAP or something similar, we're going to be using a technology called R-Sync which is built into most modern day NASs. Simple, simple protocol that allows you to transfer data from here to here, allows you to do mirroring and a whole bunch of other cool stuff. So we're talking about that today. Remember as always to subscribe to my channel, Digital Byte Computing, to keep up to date, clicking on that bell so that you know when I'm releasing new videos. Let's cross over to my computer now and we're gonna talk about that. All right, so on our computer, we have now logged in via a browser to both of our NASs, IP address of one of them being 172.16.1.50 and the other one being 1.49. Your IP addresses could be different uh, and probably are different. Now what we want to do is we want to use a technology called rsync to be able to sync the NASs between each other. This works between Netgears. In our case, we're doing between one Netgear NAS to another Netgear NAS, but it also works across different brands of NASs as long as you're using the rsync uh, protocol technology that is built into most NASs nowadays. Now, right from in here, you can see straight away uh, what my NAS looks like. So currently what I actually have in here is four three terabyte drives. These are SATA drives, three terabytes each in a RAID 5 configuration. And I've got my second NAS, which is this one here. This is an older ready NAS. This particular one is running for two terabyte drives. SATA drives, okay? It doesn't have to be exactly the same. Essentially what we're gonna do is we're going to copy some data from this NAS over to this NAS. Of course, if I wanted to copy the entire amount, uh, it's not gonna be able to do that because the quantity is obviously different. So first thing we wanna do is within here, again, this is gonna be different depending on the NAS, but we're just gonna go through the basic technology. Uh, so from within here, we're gonna go into the backup tab right here, and you'll see I've already got some rsync jobs created. These are jobs that I created earlier uh, to be able to move data between my NASs. Now before this, you need to obviously know what uh, folder, what share you're going to be wanting to copy from one location to the other. Under my section on my NAS shares right here, I've got a test share that I've created earlier. Within the test share are a couple of files. So we're just obviously doing this for a demo reason, but essentially what we're gonna to need to do is you need to enable the rsync protocol so that the other NAS can communicate to this NAS over rsync. So here's the thing that we're gonna do. We're gonna select test share. We're gonna click on configuration, go into settings. And in here, we need to go into network access and it will say rsync right here. So you wanna select rsync, make sure that it is turned on. Now, I like to, because I like to sometimes have a sync between uh, both my NASs back and forth, I'm gonna say it's gonna be read write. That way a NAS in the destination can also act as the source and push the data back if it needs to. You can add a password if you so choose to and say apply. So all this is now done is it's enabled the rsync um, technology, okay? That's the first step. The next thing that I like to do is under the host section, only limit the hosts that need to be able to access this particular share over the rsync protocol. So in my case, I know that the IP address of my other NAS is 172.16.1.49. So I'm gonna go into here and I'm going to add that into there so that that particular share is now trusted against that host of 149, okay? That's the first step. So now I've got my share set up, I've got the access set up, and I've got it set up to do rsync over the protocol. Into the backup section again, now that it's all set up on our source NAS, on our destination NAS, you of course have to also have rsync enabled. So under, in this section, again, this is gonna be dependent on the type of NAS that you've got, but on this older ready NAS, under the services area, I've got standard file protocol, and down the very bottom, I've got rsync. I wanna tick that, make sure that that is ticked so that it can actually um, use that protocol. Once that is done, similar to the other NAS, we have now created a folder or I have a folder. 
I need to now create a destination folder for that particular backup. So within here, I'm going to say add share. I'm gonna give it a name. So I'm gonna now say source backup. This is a test. Uh, public access sure, we'll leave that all okay. Apply, of course you can go and change these permissions um, as you need to later on. Sorry, if I go back into share listing. I've now got source backup, this is a test. And by default, it's using the KIFS uh, protocol, which is SMB. Uh, I can also enable rsync. Default access is read write because we wanna be able to write to it and read because we want to be able to read to it. So similar to the other one where we said it is read write. Hosts allowed to access, again, this is similar, but now we're doing it the other way around. So I'm putting the IP address of my source NAS. Ensure that you've got a, a direct connection between the two NASs. If you, if you want, you can have it more open so that other devices can access it, but I like to have it a bit more secure where the two can see each other and that's enough. Asking password options, do you wanna be able to set a password? We're not gonna do that for this demo. I would recommend that you do do it if you are doing this in a production environment and you wanna keep that sync going. And you ought to be able to do rsync over SSH, essentially encrypted. Um, we can do that if you want to. It's gonna give you an SSH key, which is actually quite helpful. So we're gonna now say apply. So let's just go back in here just to make sure it's all okay. So it looks good, source backup, this is a test and rsync is turned on. And on this particular NAS, everything is turned on on both sides. So let's go to add backup. We're gonna say test rsync job, okay? What is the local path? So this is the local uh, destina well, the local source that we want to be selecting so that it moves it over to the destination. So we're gonna say browse, and we're now gonna go navigate to test share, which we saw just before. So test share is the share that we created, that we dumped some files into, and where do we want to copy it to? Now, the first thing is the protocol. Now, we're gonna make sure that we select rsync. Okay, this is rsync over SSH if you do have the encryption keys, but we're gonna just select rsync right here. What is the host? So now we're gonna put the IP address of the destination, which is 49. Gonna leave the port as default. The share will be backup. Well, before we do that, we're gonna go and put in the credentials. So it's not going to be able to connect into that NAS unless it has the relevant credentials to be able to get into the NAS in the first place. Now, if you have set it anonymously, you may be able to get in, but I like to provide relevant credentials. I'm gonna use for now my admin credentials for the destination NAS. Click on browse. So you'll see that the two folders have shown up. Now, if I go back to my other NAS, you'll notice that the only two folders that have rsync turned on are backup and source backup. And they're the two that have shown up right in here. So I can now select source backup, throw it into there, test the connection, make sure that everything's okay. Successfully connected to 149, source backup. So it is now ready to go. So it is going to now do a test share backup or sync over to this other NAS under the source backup folder. Now, if you've gotten to this stage and you can't connect to your NAS, uh, you've got to do some further troubleshooting. There is a, a possible uh, number of things. It could be a network issue. There could be a firewall in between. If it's in, a, say, a different IP range, there could be subnetting, VLANing uh, that is causing you uh, problems between the connections between the two. Uh, you could have issues on the way that you've created the permissions. Perhaps rsync hasn't been turned on. Uh, there could be a number of different things. From here, we can now select next. And now we enable the schedule. Now, do you wanna be able to just do this once? So I can just untick that and say finish, and then I can run it manually, or I can have it actually scheduled so that it runs consistently, uh, however often I need it to run. So I can do it every hour, every two hours, every day, every 24 hours and at what time do you want it to run, and on what days do you want it to run. Schedule full backup, first time every week. So it's gonna do a full backup and then incremental backups. Uh, we're not gonna go through the details, check my other videos around you know, descriptions about what the differences are there. Uh, wake on LAN, so this is essentially getting the NAS to wake up if it's gone to sleep, as long as you've got wake on LAN enabled and ready to go. So that is, uh, from that perspective, it's ready to go. So I can now select finish. Backup job is created, do you want to run it now? We're just gonna say no for the time being. But here is the job, ready to go. Uh, you can set it so that the backup button on the front of my NAS, I have a backup button so that it goes and does the backup automatically, which is brilliant. Uh, test rsync job, that's what we've called it. It's going from test share to rsync server. 
uh, which is the remote daily every 24 hours between 12 a.m. and 11 p.m. and it's ready to go. It hasn't kicked off yet. All I need to do is select it, click on this little thing here and I can select start. As soon as I click start, it's gonna now start copying and are syncing all the data over. Now, because I don't have too many files, this process should be relatively quick. It's just two files. And that job is now complete, so it didn't take very long. I can go into my log to see exactly what took place. You'll see when it kicked off, when it finished, exactly what it did. So it copied these two files. So that is a indication that everything has worked correctly. I can go and delete it. I can go and go into the settings and actually include some further things in there as well. Now, the great thing about our sync is you can do this both ways. As I said before, you can go and create a new backup job and actually say the remote. So I wanna connect directly into my remote NAS and copy the data back. So you can actually set up multiple jobs going back and forth as many times as you want, whenever you want them to be on a schedule or not on a schedule. Uh, very, very easy between NASs, between these two Netgear NASs, or even between other branded NASs as you so choose to. So what I've done is I'm now connected to my NAS over the SMB protocol uh, on my Mac. You can do this on Windows, exactly the same thing through Windows Explorer. And under 149, I've now mounted my source backup and you'll see that right in here, it's got the folder, test share, and the two files that I've copied. So this is just proof that the data has actually been copied from one location to the other. And that's a simple step on how to set up your Netgear ReadyNAS using rsync and migrating the data, copying the data, moving the data from one NAS to another NAS. That's it, thanks for liking, commenting, and subscribing, clicking on that bell for a bunch of new videos. Thanks again, see you later.